Now, how do we take Entity Framework and link it to our local DB? Now, the first thing that we'll need to do is under Models, we'll need to add a new class file. And what I'm going to create is a week for DB context. Now, this class will act as our conduit between Entity Framework and the database. The first thing we want to do is in creating this context is we want to inherit from DB context. So colon DB context. This comes out of the system.data.entity namespace. And then the next thing that we'll want to do here is we're going to want to declare DB sets for all of the tables that we want to pull from within our database. And we'll get to that part in just a moment. So we now have a context defined as week four DB context inside of our web config we can add a section to this web config under just below app settings called connection strings and inside of here we can say add and then define the name of our connection string we'll call it the same as our context name so we'll call it week 4 db context and then the connection string value itself will be one to attach to local DB. Now personally, I don't remember what most of my local DB connection strings uh, syntax is, so what I recommend doing is going out to connectionstrings.com. Connectionstrings.com is a great reference for just about any connection string you can think of. I'm going to scroll down here to SQL Server. I'm going to click on SQL Server, and then there's kind of a catalog of items that you can jump to at the very top. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Control F, and I'm going to type local DB. And as I go down through here, I'll find all of the different local DB connection string options. The option that I'm going to choose is local DB automatic instance with specific file. And what I want to do is highlight this string. I'm going to do a copy. And then I'm going to jump back to Visual Studio. Still in my web config under my connection strings area. And inside of the connection string, I'm going to paste this connection string. Now, it, let's kind of just deconstruct this for a moment. We have server, local DB, in parentheses, slash, v11.0. This points to the local DB SQL Server engine on your machine. SQL Server should have been installed as part of your Visual Studio installation. If for some reason you chose not to install SQL Server, uh, you can go out to the web and download SQL Server um, engine with local DB uh, from Microsoft's website. If you need help with that, please let me know. Um, integrated security true that'll just do autom automatic authentication and then the kind of secret sauce to all of this is this attach db file name currently it points to c slash my folder slash my data dot mdf which for us does not exist what we want to replace it with is pipe data directory pipe slash week for dash local db dot mdf the pipe data directory pipe points to the app underscore data folder it's kind of a exchange token and then slash week for dash local db dot mdf is the mdf file that we created under app data so no matter where this project is on the physical disk data directory gets resolved to the app underscore data folder pretty nice so we now have a context, we have a connection string which hooks Entity Framework up to our database. So let's go ahead and create a database table and then add that DB set we were talking about. So I right click on tables, say add table. My design surface will load up. And once it's loaded, I now have a new table template. Uh, we'll go ahead and leave the primary key ID field as it is. Um, that'll come in handy for us later. And what I want to do is I want to mimic 
my student class. So I have a first name, last name, and a student ID field. All of these are strings. So in this table, I'm going to create a first name and make it an nvar char. Uh, 50 is a good number. Non nullable. Uh, last name, nvar char 50. Non nullable. And student ID, nvar char 50. Non nullable again. So we now have these four fields. I'm going to come down into the T-SQL component. I'm going to replace the name table with student update. And it's going to generate a script to create that table. I'm going to go ahead and hit update database. That script then gets executed. And if I come back over to my table in my server explorer and hit refresh, I now have a student table. To accommodate for the ID field, I'm going to add a property to my student class, public int ID. So I now have four properties to match the four fields from my database table. This is important that they match because what Entity Framework will do for us is that when we define our DB set is that it will map from student to the student table and it will automatically map each one of these properties by name to the appropriate field. As long as the field matches the name of the property, that mapping occurs for us automatically. So inside of our week 4 DB context, we're going to add a property that's public and we're going to use the generic wrapper of DB set and we're going to put the name of our entity class inside of our DB set and this entity group or class will be of student and then we'll just create a property name called students and believe it or not in the most simplistic sense this is all we need to get entity framework up and running We've now created this context. The context, again, acts as the conduit between our student class that's under our models folder and the student table, which exists inside of our week four local DB instance. By having the connection string inside of the web config match the name of our, no, it's not that web config, sorry, match the context this connection string automatically gets mapped to our context. 